of the developing brain. So it's the lot of plastic, it's changeable. Okay. It's not static. Yeah. Including the power to repair damaged region to grow new neuron to rezone region of the perform one task and to change the surgery. So whether it's damage to the brain, there might be some kinds of uh, repairment for that damage. There will be uh, a new neuron the, to grow to take place and to reorganize the region for the different surgery in the brain. So that is what we call neuroplasticity or neuroplasticity. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, you can see this is a very, very typical of a neuron in the brain. Neuron or nerve cell, you see. Uh, you can see uh, the structure of uh, a neuron. You can see uh, the cell body. You can see the nucleus. You can see the simsing right, we call dendrite dendrite or dendritic spine, okay? You can see the, I mean, uh, the branch, collateral branch. You can see synaptic uh, terminal, okay? You can see node of Ranvier, Shivan cell. You can see the uh, terminal branches like that, okay? Yeah. And then you can see the, the, the cross section, the cross section of the neuron. Uh, in the cross section, you can see the axon, the nucleus, myelin sheet, and also cytoplasm of Schwann cell the, in the neuron. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one is very significant. You can see, yeah, we call action potential. So there is an action potential we call uh, electrochemical current go from one place to another place. It is a process of depolarization and repolarization. It's something like a one jitta moment. One jitta moment consists of Three things. The first one is uh, the arising of jitta, okay? The peaking of jitta and the passing away of jitta. Arising, peaking, and passing away. Arising, peaking, and passing away. So it's very similar to the action potential. You can see, okay, depolarization. I mean, the arising, and then we come to the supply, the peaking, and then we come to the process of repolarization, the passing away of the action potential. So you have to recognize the three process, arising, peaking, and passing away, arising, peaking, and passing away, or sometimes we use the term arising, 
maintaining and passing away, arising, maintaining and passing away. And this also uh, the cell body of a neuron. So it must be sufficiently stimulated to depolarize the membrane for the filing level. For the electrochemical current to move from one point to another point. Now we come to the process of uh, depolarization. So at the regions of depolarization, sodium ion, you can see the sodium ion move into the cell. Yeah. Uh, rather small, but uh, you can figure out uh, during the area of depolarization, sodium ion move into the cell. So any time when the sodium ion move into the cell, that is a process of depolarization. And this process alternate with another process which we call repolarization. Repolarization, you can see area of depolarization, area of repolarization, and area of depolarization so sodium ion move into the cell for depolarization regarding repolarization yeah potassium the potassium ion leave the cell the potassium ion leave the cell okay yeah. potassium ion channel open during a period of repolarization and Potassium ion leave the cell over here. Yeah, you can see. So there are two processes yeah, alternate together to make the action potential go along the neuron from one point to another point. It's something like domino, like this. So it is a, a direction of uh, impulsive movement or the direction of uh, electrochemical movement from one point to another point. So there is a process of uh, depolarization alternate with depolarization. Action potential or electrochemical impulses that travel from a neuron to a neuron. So it tends going to be like this. As you have already seen, that there are two processes alternate together. The process of depolarization and the process of repolarization, causing the electrical impulse to move from one point to another point along the neuron, from one neuron to another neuron. So during the, the firing, see, you can see sodium ion channel open and then sodium ion get into the cell here. Now we come to the transmission of uh, electrochemical impulse. We call synaptic transmission. Impulse are transmitted between neuron or from a neuron to an effector by neurotransmitter. So you can see this one neuron join with uh, another neuron. These are the, the points of contact. You can see the points of contact. 
this is a uh, okay the i mean the uh, the figure the the enlargement of this point the enlargement of this point you can see okay you can see action potential come here okay and uh, here we call pre synaptic neuron pre synaptic neuron and this part that we call post synaptic neuron between pre synaptic neuron and post synaptic neuron there is a, a cleft okay the space over here uh, the space over here we call pre synaptic cleft yeah pre synaptic cleft the space over here okay and you can see the vesicle over here uh, the very different vesicle this called synaptic vesicle and you can see yeah, some cranial inside the, the cranial inside is called neurotransmitter neurotransmitter so it is used for uh, neurotransmission for the transmission of action potential from pre synaptic neuron to post synaptic neuron you can see over here the different kinds of uh, neurotransmitter okay here neurotransmitter so the impulse can pass the synaptic cleft to the another neuron by means of neurotransmitter you can see neurotransmitter over here and also you can see a receptor neurotransmitter will come to contact with the the receptor and then it caused the receptor to open uh, when the receptor is open sodium ion will pass uh, into the channel yeah the the yeah, sodium channel like this come to this point to this way action potential can pass from one neuron to another neuron and then to another neuron and then to another neuron go on and on like this yeah in the brain So you can see in in the vesicle is a neurotransmitter. There are different kinds of a neurotransmitter. You see, yeah. But uh, they are very essential for transmission of uh, action potential from one neuron to another neuron. Uh, next one, please. <laughs> Okay, now we come to uh, another part of the brain. Uh, this part of the brain is related to uh, different kinds of uh, what we call uh, the sense door. The sense door, uh, for example, you see, you can see uh, 
primary gustatory or taste area. Yeah, we can know different kinds of taste, sweet taste, sour taste, bitter taste, so on and so forth. See, because we have uh, the receptor, uh, the receptor in the tongue, it conveys the message to this area of the brain so that we can recognize different kinds of taste. So this area is located uh, in the uh, parietal row. And also you can see olfactory or smell area, the olfactory or smell area. The smell area is also located in the uh, temporal lobe. You can see over here. And this one uh, also here. Yeah. Taste area, okay. And also you can see the skin senses. The skin senses. So, so sometimes we have a tangible object, something like touch, warm, cool, heat, or something like that, or even pressure, okay? So we can recognize that. So there are the area yeah, for touch, pain, and sensation from the muscle and joints. They are represented in the band across the top and side of the brain. You can see the, the band over here. We call central sarcus. And this area is a skin sense. The skin sense for touch, for warm, for cold, for heat sensation along this band, uh, this area, okay? Yeah. And also, near the primary. Now we come to, to the eye, okay? The eye. The eye is the, the sense organ of seeing, the sense organ of sight, yeah. So it's interesting to see, okay, it written over here, you can see the outer layer, the yeah, outer layer, middle layer, and also inner layer. But the significant one is that uh, the light sensitive part of the eye consisting of 10 layers in detail. Only seven layers of the retina are related to the process of signal transduction. Cranking cell layer is the last in the process of signal transduction. So you can see the retina with different layer, different layer, and also you can see the, the cranking cell uh, over here, okay? So in Buddhism, we talk about the licensive area as well. Uh, it consisting of 10 layer, the light in modern, Physiology. Okay, yeah. yeah. This also uh, the enlargement of uh, retinal area or retina. So you can see a uh, different layer over here. Yeah. You can see in, in Buddhist scripture, the Buddha mentioned very clearly that Chakayatana, Chakayatana or chakku pasana refer to sensual organ of the eye, which is known as chakayatana, chakku pasata, chakku pasata, 
is described to have a layer of structure, layer structure about seven layer, and the organ where vision is initiated has the size no bigger than the head of a louse. Here, you see, this is the uh, retinal layer. The, in Buddhism, the Buddha mentioned that uh, there are about seven layers uh, for vision. And also, uh, there is one point uh, we call uh, optic disc. Optic disc, uh, uh, it has a size of uh, no bigger than the head of a louse. Okay. So when, uh, okay, uh, now this is the ear, okay, this is the ear. So these areas, uh, you can see the sound wave here, the outer ear, the mitten ear, and the inner ear. In the inner ear, you can see here, the cochlea. Cochlea is something right a ring. Okay, you can see something like a ring, the ring for a ring finger like this. Yeah. It, it contains a area with a very significant for hearing inside the cochlea. Yeah, you can see uh, organ of cortis. Yeah, organ of cortis. Uh, at the organ of cortis, there are hair cells inside, the uh, hair cells inside organ of corti. You, see, you can see a little bit of hair cell over here. So this is a very sensitive area for healing. Hair cell is very sensitive area for healing, okay? So when the impulse comes to stimulate uh, this area, there is a vibration of uh, Hair cell. Hair cell cause signal transduction to the brain for hearing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah this one is very, very clear. Uh, in Buddhist scripture, Sota Yatana is the sensitive part of the ear called Sota Pasata. Sota Pasata. The sensitive part is described to be located at a point, at a spot shaped like a fingerling with tiny hair inside. You see, yeah, inside you see, uh, inside the cochlea, the, you can see, uh, Stereocilia, okay, the yeah. small hair cell over here, small hair cell. And then this uh, alley is very sensitive uh, for the sound to be transmitted to uh, the area of the brain responsible for hearing. Okay. Particularly, you can see uh, the nerve, the nerve fiber over here, the nerve fiber will go to the brain. Uh, to the uh, healing area or uh, we call uh, auditory nerve, yeah. Uh, another thing that I would like to to mention, <clears throat> we talk about uh, different sense door. Okay, uh, okay. Now we come to the nose case. Yeah. The nose uh, in Buddhist scripture we call kana yatana. Kana yatana is a uh, kana pasata. Kana Pasata, it is located inside the nose at the spot shaped like 
goat hoof. At a spot shaped like goat hoof, you can see here. Yeah. Or factory nerve here. It, it looks like the, the goat hoof, okay? Or factory nerve. And then it, it goes to the brain. I, I have already told you, to the brain area responsible for smelling. Yeah. Uh, or factory nerve, or factory bowel, okay. And uh, regarding the nose, yeah. Uh, in order to be able to smell something, we call nose door process. So there must be nose, the uh, hana yatana or nose sensitivity, or nose sensitivity. There must be smell. Smell can mean uh, kantharum. Kantharum, okay, smell, kantharum. And also, there must be we call air element. There must be vayotatu. In order to be able to smell something, there must be the wind, uh, the wind or the air element. Otherwise, we cannot smell it. Yeah, okay. So, there are four factors. Another factor, there must be what we call attention. If we have no attention, there is a smell. Uh, if we don't pay any attention to the smell, we cannot recognize it. Okay, yeah. So there must be four factors. In in the same manner, the we just saw that the ear, the ear door process. Okay, you can see, uh, so ta pasata, so ta pasasa, particularly the the hair cell. Okay, hair cell when the sound come into contact with the hair cell, okay, there is a, the, the sound or satal, the sound is the satarum. Satarum, there must be space, uh, akasa, yeah, there must be space in the ear, okay, and then there must be attention. Sometimes you see, we hear something, but if we don't pay any attention, we cannot hear it. So there must be attention. In the same manner, we say when we talk about the eye door process, we talk about eye sensitivity. Eye sensitivity means chakku pasatha, chakku pasatha means the retina and also yeah, the bright spot, the, the bright spot and also uh, the nerve. Okay, yeah, the nerve that go to the brain, particularly to the visual area, responsible for seeing. So there must be the light, aloka. If there is no light, no aloka, we cannot see. Like in the dark, we cannot see anything. So there must be the, the light, okay? And the last factor is attention. If we don't pay any attention, even though we see something, we don't pay any attention to that. We cannot recognize it. So there are four essential factors, particularly the last one, the attention. Okay. okay. Now we come to the tongue, uh, to the tongue, the tongue door process. The siu ha yatana or siu ha pasata. Shiuhayatana yeah. or Shiuha Pasata is described to be located on the tongue at a spot shaped like upper part of torn lotus leaf. You can see uh, the, the papillary. It's something like the taste bud. The taste bud. So when uh, something comes into the mouth and then the. So we can taste it yeah, because uh, there is a water, the water like uh, inside the mouth, the, the water or apotatu uh, inside the mouth. And then the, so the taste come into the contact with the receptor or the taste bud, the receptor or the taste bud. And then we can taste different kinds of taste, maybe sweet taste, sour taste, bitter taste, or other kinds of taste. Yeah. Yeah. It is what we call 
tongue door, the tongue door process. So for the tongue door process, we need the uh, four factors. The first one is a uh, uh, we call yeah Chuha Pasata Chuha Pasata okay yeah or taste but and also we need the uh, we call Rasalom Rasalom means uh, taste different kinds of taste and we also need water water element particularly in the mouth we have a Sarewa Sarewa is a water element and then we must have attention. You see, if we don't have any attention, sometimes we, we don't recognize the taste. Sometimes it is a sour taste, it's a bitter taste, but if we don't pay attention to it, we cannot recognize them, okay? Yeah. Yeah, you can see uh, different areas of uh, taste region to see at the tip yeah, is uh, the area for sweet yeah, sweet taste uh, and then you can see the area for salty taste the area for sour taste and deeper inside the area for bitter taste uh, different kinds of taste that we, we can recognize the sense of taste Taste, but are most numerous on the tongue. Certain region of the tongue responds more strongly than other region to specific tastes. So the taste buds uh, are situated along the tongue, yeah, as we can see. And also different areas represent uh, different kinds of tastes. It may be sweet taste, may be salty taste, Maybe sour taste or maybe bitter taste. Okay, yeah. Now we come to uh, the body door process. The body door process. In the Buddhist scripture, the Buddha mentioned Kaya Yatana. Kaya Yatana is a Kaya Pasata. Kaya Pasata is located along the body, spreading throughout the whole body, spreading throughout the whole body, except the hair and the nail. The hair and the nail, okay? There is no kaya pasata, no body receptor at all. But otherwise, all over the body, there are different kinds of body receptor. So it may be touch receptor, maybe pressure receptor, maybe heat receptor, maybe cold receptor, or sometimes we use the term temperature receptor. And we also have pain receptor, we call nociceptor, nociceptor or pain receptor yet yeah, throughout the whole body. So when we have an injury or when we are cut, the skill is cut by the knife or, curl or by some sharp material, so you might experience uh, some kinds of pain because nausea receptor are stimulated Okay, at that particular point. Yeah. Okay, here, uh, receptor in the skin. Okay, you can see a uh, receptor for touch, receptor for pressure, receptor for vibration, receptor for temperature, receptor for pain or no receptor. Okay, yeah. So the arm. Um, Many, many receptors all over the body, okay? Different kinds of receptors, yeah, in the skin, okay? Yeah, over here, you can see uh, touch and pressure receptor, 
receptor for heavy pressure and also receptor for vibration, receptor for vibration as well. And also light touch and pressure receptor, touch receptor. Okay. Uh, it's not shown here, you got nausea receptor or pain receptor. Yeah. Now we come to uh, another point. This is uh, uh, we call the heart. Hatayawatu. Uh, Hatayawatu is described to be located in the hollow around the side of Budnaka Sea, where high full but is kept. So you can see the heart. Heart is divided into four chamber. Upper, the upper two chamber and lower two chamber. Okay, the upper two chamber. The right one we call right atrium. The left one we call left atrium. And uh, the lower we have two ventricle. Right ventricle and left ventricle. And how about Hatayawatu? Hatayawatu is described located at the right atm, the right atm. Yeah, very close to the SA node. SA node means the sino atrial node. And the side of Hatayawatu is about Unakasi. You can see this is the you can see a two centimeter, a two centimeter. Yeah, this is uh, the place where Hatayawatu is located. Yeah. As mentioned here, Hatayawatu is described to be located in the hollow side of a Punaka seed, yeah, seed, in the right atrium near. Sinu node. And uh, according to Buddhism, the seat of the heart is located at over here at the Hathayawatu. So in another word, Hathayawatu is the seat of the heart or the heart base. So Hathayawatu is the seat of the heart or the heart base. It just to be the seat of the heart. And how about the brain? You see, in Buddhism, we believe that the brain is just the office of the heart. So, the heart, the heart is the seat of the brain, or the heart is the house of the mind. But the brain is the office of the mind. So when the mind has to function, so the mind has to work with the brain. Without the brain, the mind cannot work. But the seeds or the how of the mind is located at Hatayawatu. And Hatayawatu is located in a hollow uh, at the right atrium near, near Sinu atrial node or near SA node, uh, like in this figure you can see uh, SA node. Okay, yeah, you can see the light atrium. You can see the uh, punaka seed. Punaka is uh, here is two two centimeter. The size is about two centimeter. Okay, upper light chamber uh, collecting the oxygenated blood and also related to SA node, we deal with the electrical conduction system. Uh, besides AV node, uh, we have a uh, left chamber, left chamber collecting oxygenated blood from the lung. And then we have a uh, AV node, yeah, atrial ventricular node, 
and also AV node, na A two O ventricular bundle uh, to carry nerve impulse to different area of the heart. So you can understand, okay? In in Buddhism, uh, we believe that the heart is located at the heart. Yeah, what to? Is something like the house of the heart, but the office, I mean uh, the brain. The brain is the office of the mind. The brain is the office of the mind. So the brain has different function. So when the mind go to have different function, it must go to the brain. It must work closely with the brain. Without the brain. The mind cannot work. The mind cannot have any function at all. It just stay still. Yeah, in the heart, yeah, what to? Okay, yeah. Uh, lower light chamber or right atrium. Now we, we uh, okay. I think uh, we uh, we have finished uh, that part, and then the. Uh, I think uh, maybe we can talk a little bit uh, about this, and uh, we will get uh, into more detail uh, tomorrow. Okay, yeah, uh, about the practice of uh, vipassana or insight meditation. Usually, we start with uh, sitting meditation. Yeah, uh, as I have already mentioned. During sitting position, so we must have uh, we call the object of inside meditation. Uh, in this kinds of practice, so we use the uh, the rising and falling of the abdomen as the main object. Uh, we using the rising and falling of the abdomen as the main object. So, we observe the rising and falling of the abdomen. So at this point, you can see. So there are two things you can remember: nama and rupa. Rupa means materiality, and nama means mentality. When we talk about rupa or materiality, there are two kinds of rupa. Or two kinds of materiality. The first one we call conventional truth or conventional reality. In Bali, we use the term b a n j a t i s a t j a or s a m u t t i s a t j a b a n j a t i s a t j a or s a m u t t i s a t j a So it belongs to conventional truth. It is a reality, but it belongs to Conventional reality, not ultimate reality. But we will talk about that later. Uh, for example, uh, as everybody know, you see, we we talk about four uh, primary element: the earth element, p a t a v i t a t u the water element, a p o t a t u The fire element, t e s h o t a t u The wind element or the air element, w a y o t a t u All of this belong to the four element, but they belong to conventional truth, not conventional reality. They belong to b a n j a t i or s a m u t i s a t j a not. The ultimate s a t j a What are the ultimate s a t j a Then we go to the next one, please. Yeah. Yes, you see, ultimate truth or ultimate reality we call paramata s a t j a Paramata s a t j a means uh, the characteristic of The four primary element. So the characteristic of the four primary element. Yeah, we talk about the earth element. 
the earth element has hardness and softness as characteristic. So hardness and softness belong to ultimate truth. So it has caused nature. So hardness and softness belong to ultimate truth or paramatta satya. And then the water element. The characteristic of water element are fluidity and cohesion. It has adhesive nature. So fluidity and cohesion are characteristic of water element. Fluidity and cohesion belong to ultimate truth or ultimate reality or belong to Paramatta Satya. And then we come to the five elements. The characteristic of the five elements consists of hotness and coldness. Hotness and coldness. Okay? Hotness and coldness. So it has a digestive nature. So hotness and coldness belong to characteristic of the five elements. Hotness and coldness belong to ultimate truth or paramatha satcha. And then we come to the wind element or the air element. The characteristic of the wind or the air element consists of tightness, distension, looseness, movement, support, and expanding nature. So, but among the different characteristics of the wind element, the most prominent one is the movement. The movement is very easy to observe. It is a major uh, characteristic of the wind element and the movement belong to ultimate truth or belong to Paramatha Satcha. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, suppose uh, we do sitting meditation. Yeah, we have to observe both Nama and Rupa, mentality and materiality. Nama, uh, Nama, uh, mentality. What do we mean by Nama? Nama means the mind. The mind that observes the rising and falling of abdomen. So we can recognize rising, falling, rising, falling. We can recognize that because we have the mind to observe it. In practice, the meditator is advised to focus his mind on the abdominal movement, the ultimate tooth, but not on the form and shape of abdomen, which belong to conventional tooth. So this point is very, very significant when you do what we call vipassana or inside meditation. Suppose uh, we use the rising and falling of the abdomen as the major object. So you have to be able to observe the movement of the abdomen. You make a mental note, rising. There will be moving forward from one point to another point to another point until it comes to the end of its movement. And then you make a mental note, falling. The movement will come back, going back from one point to another point to the end of the movement. So you have to observe the movement of the abdomen, not, not focus on the form and shape of the abdomen. 
if you focus on the shape or the form of the abdomen, that belong conventional tooth. It belong to concentration meditation, vipassana meditation, or insight meditation. In order to practice uh, vipassana meditation, you have to be able to observe the movement, the movement of the abdomen forward from one point to another point, as I just mentioned, and then backward from one point to another point until it come to the end. Through this way, okay, so you can observe the rising and falling of the abdomen. You can observe the movement yeah, of the abdomen from one point to another point. As I have already mentioned, the movements belong to the conventional tooth. No, excuse me, the movement belong to the ultimate tooth, but the shape and form of the abdomen belong to the conventional tooth. So in order to practice what we call vipassana or inside meditation, you have to be able to observe the movement of the abdomen which belong to ultimate tooth from one point to another point until it comes to the end. Okay, Through this way, you can observe Okay, Nama, and then at the same time, you can observe Rupa as well. Okay, let's let go to the next slide, please. Yeah. Sorry, sir, can I ask a question? And, sorry, sir, can I ask a question? Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so, with regards to uh, observing the movement uh, and ultimate reality, yeah, so for me. If I just feel the movement, then it sounds like it's just the feeling of the whole movement. Then it feels like ultimate reality. But if I label it rising or if I label it falling, then I feel it becomes actually conventional truth. And then, then in that way, it's not vipassana. So does it mean I, that I, I, I think uh, you you are right? You are right. You see, the word the word rising, falling rising and falling belong to conventional truth mm. not conventional reality not not ultimate excuse me uh the rising and falling the word rising falling rising and falling belong to conventional truth not the ultimate truth but at the beginning at the beginning of the practice you see we, we have to use uh Conventional truth, I mean the word, rising, falling, rising, falling, particularly for, for the beginner. Mm -hmm. Okay, even though it belongs to conventional truth, we just do it for a while. And, and later on, you see, we don't have to use it. We just only really observe. You yeah, can see, okay, rising, falling. We don't have to make a mental note. Yes, At yes. the beginning, so it, it tends to be like that. But yes. later on, you see, we can observe the movement itself on it or without making any mental note inside. Yes. Okay. okay? Right. Yeah. Perfect. Just Understood. only for, for the beginning, that's all. Yes. Because uh, the word rising and falling still belong to conventional truth. Yes. But the movement itself that you observe belong to the ultimate truth or yes. paramati paramati yeah paramati rupa or yes. ultimate truth okay yeah okay great thank you oh uh, let let us okay Uh, let let just mention a little bit about this. Uh, I think we can get into more detail uh, the tomorrow. Uh, regarding making a mental note rising and falling, yeah, as uh, you have asked me, uh, you are right. You see, because uh, the word rising 
and falling still belong to conventional truth or conventional reality. But for the beginner, so it is necessary to use conventional truth, you see, for a while until he gets used to observation. And then he can observe the rising and the falling of the abdomen without making any mental note. Yes. Okay. Uh, when we make a mental note, uh, rising and falling of the abdomen, it belongs to mindfulness of the four primary elements. Uh, you can remember, you see, uh, in the morning I mentioned that uh, when we practice mindfulness of the body, in the body, mindfulness of the body, in the body or contemplation of the body in the body there are six papa six papa and then the one papa we call tatu manasakara papa the fifth the fifth one the, the fifth one we call tatu manasakara papa this past the we have to focus on four primary elements now, particularly the wind element. The four primary elements we mean the, uh, the earth element, uh, Hatu, the Patavi Tatu, the water element, Apo Tatu. Okay, and then we have wind element. Okay, yeah. And also we have five elements. So among the four primary elements, the most prominent one, the most prominent one is uh, the wind element. Uh, particularly, you see, the wind in the stomach. Yeah, the wind in the stomach. So as I mentioned here, among the four primary elements, the wind or the element is the most prominent one. We focus our mind on the movement of the abdomen while making a mental note rising, falling, rising, falling, rising, falling. So for the beginner or at the beginning of practice, yeah, we have to make a mental note rising, falling, rising, falling. Yeah, as someone uh, asked me, yeah, I think you are right because uh, the word rising and falling still belong to conventional truth or conventional reality, not the ultimate reality, but the movement itself belong to ultimate reality. You just observe the movement, okay? Rising, falling, rising, falling, without making any mental note. Okay? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, I, I will talk a little bit, and then I think maybe tomorrow we we'll get into uh, more detail. Uh, in medical physiology, the rising and falling of abdomen are caused by the movement of the wind in the abdomen. So in the abdomen, we have a uh, one kind of uh, wind we call Uchita Wayo. Uchita Wayo. The movement of the wind in the abdomen is the result of contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a flat dome shaped muscle separating the thoracic cavity from uh, abdominal cavity. Contraction of the diaphragm cause the rising of the abdomen. On the contrary, relaxation of the diaphragm give life to the falling of the abdomen. So the rising and falling of the abdomen are not related to the breathing out and the breathing out. Not related to that. In fact, it is related to the movement of the diaphragm. 
the diaphragm separate between the uh, above above is a thoracic cavity and below is the abdominal cavity okay so when there is a contraction of the diaphragm so the wind in the stomach will be put forward causing the rising of the abdomen on the contrary when there is a relaxation of the diaphragm it will cause the falling of the abdomen. So the major cause of uh, the rising and the falling of the abdomen is the contraction and the relaxation of the diaphragm, not related to the breathing in and the breathing out. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, maybe uh, we, we have to stop right now. So tomorrow, uh, we start again, okay, at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning or at 9 a.m., okay? And you, you might have uh, some more questions, okay? And, and tomorrow, I think uh, if you have some experience uh, about uh, mindfulness meditation, particularly Vipassana meditation, we, we can share our experience uh, about this, yeah. Uh, and any more question uh, for today? Uh, if there is no more question, I would like uh, to cross my lecture uh, this afternoon. So I will see everybody tomorrow at 9 a.m. Okay. Uh, good afternoon for everybody. Okay. Good afternoon for everybody. Okay. Afternoon.